It's cars are loud. <laughs> hey fellow reading warriors and welcome to today's video. As you may have noticed, we are in a completely different location. That's because we are in a tent-like structure. It's my reading vlog where I'm going camping. So I have been planning on doing a reading vlog while doing this weekend camping trip with my family literally for the past almost two months. This is an annual camping trip that we go on every Memorial weekend. We drove back home to Michigan to be with our family. It's very exciting. Um, the book that I planned on reading during this camping trip was The Stars in April by Peggy Wargo and I thought this would be a great camping trip uh, book because it is short so it leaves me plenty of time to still play games with my family but it also it's a historical fiction about a Titanic survivor and being by Lake Michigan you know I just kind of thought water plus I've been really wanting to read a historical fiction for quite a while and this is based off the true story of Ruth Becker um, but the thing is is that I haven't finished my current read so like I, I will prioritize this first as just like a weekend reading this book, but I'm hoping to finish it because it's like 227 pages and it's a fast read. So I'm hoping that'll still leave me time for my current read, which is Homegoing by Yag Yassi, and I am 100 page into this book and it's also 300 pages. It, again, it's a short book except that it's very dense, so it's kind of slower than I was hoping, but that's it's also not slow paced, which is promising. Um, also, my aunt has read this book and she's actually reading Yagiyasi's other book, King, uh, Translucent Kingdom, so I'm really excited to continue talking with her about this author, but I will catch up with you guys when I do something interesting or have started reading The Stars in April. Good morning everyone so oh my hair so it is Saturday morning we just finished breakfast I didn't do an update last night because I did go to bed quite late that's kind of what we do on camping um, but I hope you're enjoying some of the montage clips of uh, me reading as well as games I honestly might have more montage clips of playing games just because a it's hard to film while camping cause there's no place to set your phone to film you reading but B Pretty much all we do when we go camping is play games. <laughs> we don't do much else, and as you can tell, it's cold. So we're not really going to the beach or uh, like doing any of the summer camping things. So we're it's supposed to warm up today, so hopefully it won't be as bad as it was yesterday. It's freezing. Um, but I did read the first 50 pages of The Stars in April, and I am enjoying it so far. I feel like the main character very much has to fill the shoes of she's a child but she has to help her mom out so she kind of has to take a mature role but she doesn't always fulfill that role just like because she's a child which is totally fair the writing is beautiful yet simplistic so you can just like fly through it and it makes you feel good um and yeah i i definitely see there's a lot of room for growth for the character and i am very much just kind of anticipating uh, their journey on the Titanic as this starts with them on the train getting to the boat to get them to the Titanic so there's a lot of like build up to it and so the build up is not too bad it is going pretty quickly but I am really just anticipating and excited for what it's actually like for her on the Titanic and if the ending 
is going to be like her being saved from the Titanic or like where that's going to be. Pretty sure there's an epilogue, so that'll be good. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an update. It is Saturday morning. We will be here for another for today, Sunday, and then we were planning on leaving Monday morning. We might leave Sunday night, just depending, but yeah, I am hoping to finish this. I don't want to jinx it, but I would love to finish this today and then get some reading of my current read of Homegoing happening. Um, also, because my aunt is here and she has read it, so I would love to discuss it with her a little bit, but still my priority is the stars in April, so I'm hoping I can read this fairly quickly so I can keep talking with my aunt. And yep, my hair is... My hair is my hair. It's, it, we're camping, so, you know, we're just going to deal with it. But I'll catch you guys up later when I have read some stuff. Yes, I think that's right. Mm. Yeah. My baby Olivia. No more, okay? You had a lot. Is your tummy full of M&Ms? Is it full? Rawr! Alrighty, it is about midday, and I have been reading, not as much as I wanted to, but like I also figured that that was going to happen. You know, I sit here and I'm like, oh, I want to read, and then I play a game instead. But I am almost 100 pages into The Stars in April, and it's a shorter book. It's only like 230 pages, so like, I'm under halfway. I am enjoying it. I... It's like I'll notice some small little thing and then I'll forget about it because I'll be like, oh, I want to talk about that, and then it's just gone. I'm enjoying it. I kind of, it's very interesting how, like, the stars are a prominent theme, but then, like, they're only a prominent theme at the end of the chapters and not so much in them. But I think this beginning part of them not being on the Titanic but being on an other boat is starting to take up more space in the book than I thought it was. So I think I'm just going to have to keep reading before I decide if I actually liked the pacing of this book or not so yeah that's my midday update i hopefully will update you again before the end of the day but i'm not making that promise So it's the end of Saturday, and I am sad to report I did not finish The Stars in April quite yet. I am over halfway. I have less than 100 pages left. Again, if I can just sit down and read for even just like an hour, I expect to have this done. I know the lighting is terrible. I'm so sorry. I'm in the camper. It's warm in here, but I sleep in a tent, so I don't get to be in the warm camper. But I am still enjoying it so far. There are a couple of things that kind of threw me off. Just like I would read a line and be like, I feel like that's just not quite right. Or it doesn't match my own experience with things that I have in common with some of these characters. And I'll go more into depth at the end of it. But yeah, it is midnight on Saturday. So it's kind of, it's almost Sunday, which is going to hopefully be the last day I have to do this. Um, but we've also got a lot planned for tomorrow. So we'll just have to see. Okay, hi! So it is now Tuesday morning, and as you can tell, I'm not camping anymore. I did finish The Stars in April by Peggy Wargo. I finished this late Sunday night, and so there wasn't good lighting to film, and I was tired. And then we spent all of Monday driving back to Minnesota, driving back home, which was a good like 10 hour drive. So I just, I didn't have time to film, and I really did not. I was really tired last night. So I'm filming the ending to this now. Um, so, and I, I wish I had more clips of some of the fun games and activities we did while camping, but every time I brought out my phone to film, it would die because my phone was consistently looking for service and there was none at the campground. Even if I like turned, even if I put it on airplane mode, it just, it refused to not die on me. So, Hopefully this vlog wasn't too dry, but I am going to talk about this book now. So I rated this 4 out of 5 stars. I I enjoyed it. I kind of had that feeling where I was like, I was, I was kind of getting through the half of the book, even almost like two thirds, and I was like, this is a 3 star book. But then that ending kind of flipped my whole perspective around, and that's what made it a 4 star book. So it was very obvious that the author did a lot of research for this. 
um, there are just little elements where I was like, oh, I never would have thought about that. But yeah, because it's a different time period, that is different. And it was very well thought out, very well put together, especially in the fashion. So uh, Peggy Wargo did a lot of description of what the main character Ruth was wearing and of some other lady passengers who were very fashionable. And so I thought that was a really fun, fun, cool element to just kind of expand on, but that's because that's another personal interest of mine ever so slightly. Um, but yeah, so also description of this book. This follows, this is told from the perspective of Ruth Becker, who is like a 12 year old child, I believe. And her parents are from the United States, but they were missionaries in India. They ran an orphanage in India. And so Ruth was born and raised there as were her younger siblings. Um, but her youngest sibling, her baby brother, has gone very ill, and so none of the doctors in India can help him. So they have to go back to America, and they're going to go to Michigan. That's where I'm from. Michigan. Yay! And they're going to live with their grandparents in Michigan and hope that the American doctors can help his condition. And so they get on a train to get to a port where they get on a boat to take them to England. And then from that port in England, they get on the Titanic. So we all kind of know how this ends, but it is based off of the true story. So you, again, you know how it ends vaguely. You know that the Titanic goes down on her maiden voyage, but you also know that Ruth is going to survive because how else would we have this story? Um, and if you are interested in this book, I actually posted the trailer for it on my channel and I'll have it linked down below. You can watch the trailer. You might recognize my voice as the voice of Ruth Becker and uh, fun fact, my husband is voicing the narrator. Um, so that's, that was a really fun thing for us to do. But if you want more information, go right on ahead and um, click it in the description below and watch it. Um, also. Fun fact, there are photos in the back of the printed book, and some of them do appear in the um, book trailer as well. There are different like characters and different rooms on the ships, so that when you get a description, you can go back and see the photo and actually understand what's being described, which is really fun and really cool. The main character, Ruth, she definitely grew. I personally have never really been a big fan of books where the main character is more of a child. So like To Kill a Mockingbird, lovely story, not a fan of the narrator. <laughs> just because it's a child, I, not that I don't handle children well, it's that I just, I have a harder time reading from a child's perspective because they are a child. You know, I, I like having more grown up, more mature narrators rather than like children. But Ruth obviously did a lot of growing up on this journey and so I got to enjoy her more than I thought I would. Like, she definitely was a character that grew on me. But I still feel like there was a little bit of telling rather than showing in the book in terms of how much she grew up. Like, obviously, we see through her actions how she became more mature, but I still think just the amount that she reflects and she talks just kind of seemed a little too mature and it was a little too telling. Um, and especially because she asked all the suspenseful questions all the time um, like it would be like oh is this gonna be okay and she would be like asking three questions every chapter that were like full of suspense and it was like fine a little bit because like yeah those are the questions that I'm asking but it got to be kind of repetitive in asking the suspenseful questions like I, I get it let's keep going with the story I also felt that um, so they because they were on two different boats there was a lot of exploring the ships, which makes perfect sense. You know, that's what children do. That's what I would do if I went on a big ship. I would explore. But again, it still felt kind of a little repetitive of like, you explore, you explore, you eat dinner, you explore, you get on the next boat. You explore, you eat dinner. Um, it did seem just kind of repetitive in those actions, but I did enjoy a lot of the characters that we met on these boats and they kind of helped to break up the repetitive action. So like having the gossip between the three ladies and the two acrobats was fun or like meeting Anne and her family who were from Ireland, like they kind of helped 
break up a little bit of the repetitiveness of the actions in the book and so that was something that was really nice. I felt like at the, at the beginning or when I was reaching halfway I was like so much of this book is leading up to the Titanic and not actually on or about the Titanic and it kind of irritated me until we actually got to the Titanic because um, when we got there everything just happened so quickly which at first I was like um that's kind of the point of the book I wish it was drawn out more but then but then I grew to appreciate it because I was like, well, of course it's happening quickly. That's how it felt to the characters that everything was happening so fast. You know, you got to rush up to the deck and you get your blankets and you, you get on a boat. Like it just, it made sense that it happened so quickly after I had read it. So by the time I reached the end of the book, I reflected and looked back and I kind of had my per uh, perception change where I was like, this book is not about the Titanic. It's about Ruth's journey to America. It's about her getting on a train, getting on a boat, and then ending on the Titanic. It's about that journey rather than the Titanic itself. So I grew to appreciate more the pacing of the book and what the characters went through and kind of just how much time was spent in each section of the book. And so, and of course the ending made me want to cry. I didn't actually cry, but that's because I, I never cry for like books or movies, but I can definitely see like my mom reading this and crying or like my aunt reading this and crying. Like, I think that this would be a good book to pick up if you have a prompt from like a readathon or something that's like a book that will make you cry or a book that will make you very emotional. Give this a shot because this will make you cry most likely. It kind of got to a point where I was like, okay, because of the journey that this book took me on where I wasn't liking it at first but then I liked it a lot and now I kind of want to reread it and I don't really reread books all that often but I'd be very willing to reread this one and it almost was like because I read it during like an annual camping trip it almost it tempts me to be like maybe I should read this every year on that camping trip I don't know if I will that's definitely something I'm going to think about because it's, it's definitely that kind of book, you know, it's not that long. It's not like super complicated or like where the writing is so dense. Like, no, it's a good, fun, fast read. Well, not fun. It's a good, fast read. I could definitely see myself reading it camping weekend every year. I don't know if I will, but it's definitely like that kind of book where I can see if you pick it up, you love it, you reread it like every year or something. There are a couple other things I want to touch on, one being there was a lot of teasing going on in the book in that, like from the beginning, her mom was not a fan of getting on the Titanic because it was its main voyage, which is fair. Yeah, you can definitely expect that from something. I do not blame her for that. But then it's like there are all these little jokes or little teasings about like, oh, just what if this went wrong? Or, oh, don't worry, it won't go wrong because we're like, right. and I'm sure that it's very accurate to what people said, but it's just like, you know what happens. Ooh, you just, every time, it just makes you go, mm, you poor baby, you don't know. But that's probably what it was like back then. Everyone was so excited because it's this brand new ship, it's so modern, it's so advanced. And then, and then there's this little iceberg. There was one scene where the timing was just weird. Like, cause what happened was, it was it was a circusy scene. And so the adults are like, okay, we're gonna go get some food, do some shopping. You kids can just sit here and watch the circus. We'll meet back at this place at this time. And so then they describe one act that probably took like two or three minutes and then when they met up with the adults, the kids, it seemed like so little time had passed, but the adults were like, oh, we bought tea, we bought clothes, we bought this, we went out to dinner, we, and it was like, I highly doubt that the adults got all these things done in the two minutes that the kids watched the show. Like, it just, it just seemed like the timing was like off or weird, and it just did not make sense. And there, so there are a couple like little timing things, but you know, you're jumping around because there's not much to do on a boat. Um, but it just, yeah, that was probably the only thing that, like, really bothered me still by the end of the book, is everything else that bothered me, like, got better by the end of the book. And so that's why I'm rating it four stars. 
because it was a really good book. By the end, I loved it, but it was not a perfect book. And you know, I have a hard time rating books. Uh, <laughs> five stars. So, but I would very much recommend this to anyone who wants to feel emotions, is interested in the Titanic, or, you know, it's just a good historical fiction. Um, yeah, it, she definitely knew how to, like, pull at your heartstrings. So, this is what I read. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you guys ever go camping, if that's something you've grown up doing or if your family does it, or if you haven't, if you'd be interested in camping, because I love, I love camping and we do it every year, multiple times a year. Um, comment down below if you've read any other historical fiction books around the Titanic, because I feel like so many historical fiction are, are around like World War II which like makes sense but at the same time it's like there are so many other events in history that could be talked about so I would love to find more historical fiction that aren't around World War II so let me know if there are any other Titanic books or any other historical fiction that you guys enjoy that may or may not be around World War II like obviously I'll still read World War II stories because like they're still good books um, otherwise Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Feel free to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified when I post, which is every Thursday, ish, every Thursday. Um, and until I see you all in the next video, I wish you a happy reading.